All right, y'all. Self-employment versus being an employee. There are some differences. There are quite a few differences. And I mean, hey, I should know, man, I am the prime minister of the proletariat. I did it all, man. All kind of different jobs. I understand. There's about three main things that separate being an employee versus being self-employed. And we're gonna get into it and see if you're ready to be self-employed. First things first, what this is not gonna be is a bashing session because I, I see so many people, I feel like it's a modern common thing for people to bash people who have jobs. It's crazy. I don't understand it. I don't, I don't know what's going on. You know what I mean? Society is full of working people. Everybody's not an entrepreneur and everybody hasn't been an entrepreneur forever or, or self-employed or whatever. And then all of a sudden, it's this thing where it's just like everybody, you know, we're looking down on, on people who have jobs. Crazy, it's nuts, I'm not doing it. You know what I think happened? I don't know, uh, if most of you have read the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Uh, it's, it's a common book that a lot of people read, especially in business. And a, a lot of people credit Rich Dad, Poor Dad for changing their, for them having a paradigm shift, for them changing the way they thought about work and money. But one part that I really didn't agree with, with in the book was where Kiyosaki basically was like, what he called people who got paychecks, wimps. Wimps, the wimp people, you know, the W-I-M-P. Where's my paycheck? Where's my paycheck? I think that him, him putting that in the book made anybody who was to read that book look down on people with jobs. And I think that's just ridiculous. You work 40 hours a week, you work a full-time job, you're taking care of your family with that job, you're not begging. So I'm starting out by saying that you're not begging for money when you have a job. It's the deal you go into. I don't, you know, it's not even a thing. You go into that deal. I do X, Y, and Z, and you pay me for it. I'm not begging you for a paycheck. You're paying me money that you owe me for services rendered. So we're not gonna do that here. We're not gonna do that here. I respect anybody who, you got a job, you going and working and doing what you have to do for your family. I can res I respect that. I respect every, every part about it. Now that I've completed uh, my rant for the day, your a paycheck is one of the main things that separates Having, being self-employed from being an employee. What a paycheck does a lot of times with people is give them a false sense of security. I mean, and just like in, when you're self-employed, there are no guarantees. No, you're not guaranteed to get jobs. You're not guaranteed anything. To me, there's no guarantees when you're employed. You know, you could, you could walk in. I mean, you look at the news all the time. Everybody's getting laid off. It seems like, you know, the big chunks of companies are just laying people off. And I'm sure, I'm certain that a lot of those people didn't go to work expecting to be laid off. There's no guarantees. I kind of think that's where the two are equivalent, uh, being self-employed versus being an employee are kind of equivalent because there are no guarantees. So don't, because you do have a paycheck, don't trick yourself into thinking that you have guaranteed money coming in because you don't. A lot of times having a paycheck or you know just getting a paycheck, it can hinder people from trying new things. All right, so, but I would never advise, like I said, I just quit straight up and just went full time in, but I backed myself into a corner. I would never advise to do that. What I would say is try to marry the two, uh, self-employment and being an employee to fund your business. That seems like the best way to do it. That way, while you do have some money coming in, which is not guaranteed, but while you do have a paycheck coming in, you can be, you can, you can take more risks. You can try and experiment with different things, and you should be because you need to do something to prepare yourself just in case that job doesn't work out. The next thing that separates the two, being self-employed for being an employee, is of course. And they kind of one and the same. It's control and responsibility. So, and they, they're kind of, they kind of, they're they're married together. You know what I mean? Where being self-employed, of course, you're in control of everything. Okay, you're in control of all the policies. He says, even though you might be self-employed, a one-man shop or whatever, you you need policies. I'm I'm big on that. You better make some policies, and the customer needs to understand that you have policies. You know, you don't have to worry about that as an employee because they're all already there. You sign up, you matter of fact, you agree to the policies once you get there. You're responsible for 
getting all the jobs. You're responsible for handling all the money, which is a whole nother thing. I, you know, I had a job in the past where we'd go get supplies and, you know, say we had to go to a janitorial supply company. I would just take the company credit card, go to the place, buy whatever I needed, take it back, make sure I gave the receipt to the, to the secretary and the card, and that was it for me. <laughs> you know, it's a beautiful thing. That is not the case now. The case is now that, you, you know, when, when you're self-employed, you have to make sure you have the money for everything. And you say you get a deposit for a job that's, you know, two months away, you, you know, there are guys and a lot of contractors find themselves with legal problems, all sorts of issues because of handling money improperly. Where, you know, the, you heard of the whole thing, robbing Peter to pay Paul. You know, you got guys that are getting this job and taking the deposit from this job and using it for this job over here. And then they got to fund this one and take the money. Oh, well, now they spent the money for the supplies for this other job for, on this other job. And now they're scrambling to get another job to pay for the supplies from the, it's, and it turns into a total mess. When you should just have the accounts, everything separated in the beginning. But this is a huge difference between the two. And, and, and it's, it's, it can be a lot to handle. You can make it easy on yourself. Like there's things that I do, like, uh, you know, when I get a deposit in, I always, you know, people can say what they want. I always separate on my estimates. The materials are separate from the labor. It, they're all separated. So the people know what they're paying for materials. And I, I ask for 100% of that up front because my whole thing is, it's your stuff. Like I'm just, I have no desire to pay for all your materials. Like your, your materials, if you want to go, and I even say if the, if the customer, if you would rather go get them and you get a military discount or something like that, you're more than welcome. I don't, you know, if I don't have to shop for somebody, I don't want to, I'm over it. I'm over it, man. I don't, I don't want to tell me I'm losing money by not marking them. I don't care. Do your own shopping if you love to. But, <laughs> but what I'll do is, you know, like I said, I have an account for job materials and they'll pay the deposit. The job material money goes into the job material account and I put a notation in there for such and such a job. And this chunk is for that job and that's it. And what I do is I have a, my main account and I go to the store and I buy materials for that job. Then whatever I spent, Say I spent $300 on material, I take $300 out of that job account and transfer it over to the main account. And it, it just, it works seamless. So I don't have to think about it, but you have to separate. That's one thing the banking account system does for you, but that's not what this video is about. This video is about just the differences. It's just understanding there's, when you have to deal with all the money, it opens your eyes to how, to why you need to charge uh, what you need to charge. Because, you know, in a business, you can go broke quick or you can, you know, go in a hole fast or start running into a lot of issues with money if you're not watching what's going on. I had a, a video where I was talking about tool addiction and man, out here trying to buy all the tools and all the expensive stuff and everything, it'll have you broke for no reason. Okay, so big, big difference between uh, being self-employed and being an employee is being responsible for all the money. The last and I think biggest difference between being self-employed and being an employee, time management. And I'm talking about as a whole. There are good and bad things that come with it, you know, depending on how you see it. Starting off, the, the amount of time it takes you to do a job is, you know, is something that's set by you. You're in control of it. It's something that you have to manage and make sure that you're not overselling yourself. You're not telling people that the job is gonna take X amount of time and then it ends up being way past what it's supposed to be. I mean, these are all things that you control. So that's just what, but that's just one tiny aspect of time management. The biggest one is that there ain't no time clock, okay? As an employee, the reality of it is you can go to work and then clock out and you don't have to think about that job until the next day. Or you could take your weekend at your leisure, go on a vacation and not even worry about what's going on at work. Nothing, you no, know, nothing piling, you know, stuff is gonna get done and it just doesn't matter. It's not that way if you're self-employed, especially self-employed. 
it could be different if you're running a full-fledged business, of course, where you have managers, you have staff to take care of certain things. But when you're at the self-employed stage, or some people, that's what they want to do. They just want to do the self-employment thing. They don't want a full, uh, a massive business, or, or just even a small business. There ain't no clocking out, man. We all know that you're going to work. If you start a business and you're self-employed, you're going to work way more than you ever have in your life. They ain't no, eight, an eight hour day is, is just a myth. They ain't no such thing as an eight hour day. I know, I know when I started out, 20 hours a day. I, I would probably say 20 hours a day because it's not just the physical work. I'm at home trying to figure out how to make a website. I'm making the website. You're advertising, you're the, you're the marketing team. You're everything. It's just, it doesn't stop. And then even once you do start growing, it's still any issues like, you know, estimates are on you. Invoicing is on you. You still got that money issue that we were talking about earlier. Now you have a bunch of customers. Early on, most of the time, you don't set boundaries. And that's just because you're so eager. What you look like starting out, and it's, you know, you're like, yeah, well, you know what? I don't answer the phone on weekends. You don't answer the phone on weekends. And you just started a business and you don't answer the phone on weekends? What, what are you talking about? How you plan to grow this thing? That's a privilege to get to the point where you can, like, I, I, do, I go now where, okay, if I'm going out of town or something, phone gets turned off. Certain times of the day, phone gets shut off. And you can't do that when you're first starting out. You're gonna be working way more hours on, there's no such thing as weekends. You say you're off on the weekends, you're not doing work, physical work, but nine times out of 10, you're getting in those books, you're up, you're getting the QuickBooks done. You're getting the, uh, like I said, you're getting your estimates finished and, and sent out. You're, you're, or you're just going out to do estimates. There's always something to do. Nowadays, you got social media. Somebody has to take care of that. There's just always something to do. Then there's vacation and sick time and all that stuff that when you're an employee, you get those things. Well, <laughs> I had a job one time that was, I mean, they were savages, man. I mean, I think after a year, it was one week. We got one week of, one week of leave after an entire year. It's crazy. And... You know, but most most jobs you get some sort of annual leave, sick leave, or you know, some company if it's PTO or whatever. They're all kind of different H work comp time, but in the end, it's just time that they pay you that you can take off. You just don't get that when you're self-employed. You have to plan for that. You have to plan for when you're not working, you don't make any money. That's a huge difference between the two. Um, in both places, you can still get burnout because there are a lot of jobs that are trying to work you to death. So I'm not even going to be the one to sit here and say that, um, you know, people aren't, aren't working at aren't their jobs or everybody's just working eight hours. You know, there are a lot of people, they trying to <laughs> they trying to kill you all out here. You know, I did. I, told, I, I worked at Amazon in the warehouse and all kind of stuff. I know. I know they're trying to take you out. <laughs> they're trying to take you out, man. In the end, of course, it's up to you. I always, you know, lean towards the side of self-employed just because, I didn't have the best experiences as an employee. Now that I'm self-employed and I've been that way for years, I, I love it. I love everything about it. I couldn't see myself going back to being an employee for anything. And I also understand being a little shook as far as, you know, wanting to leave and being a little scared and all that. So I am a big proponent of start part-time, build up, see if you even like it, see if being self-employed and dealing directly with customers like in their houses or however your business sets it up see if, if it works for you you know i wouldn't get out there and just quit the job just jump out the window right in the beginning but i mean at the end of the day you're gonna do what you want to do anyway if you're interested in starting a handyman business i have a video right here that you should definitely watch all right so signing off daryl also known as a finisher stay safe and be blessed